The specs on this Schecter are pretty cool. Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglodytes Guitar Show. Today we're checking out the Schecter C1EA Classic Semi-Hollow Electric Guitar. I know that's a big long title, but it blends electric and acoustic models, hence the EA, and it's a semi-hollow, kind of like a Gibson 335, and this whole review and demo is possible thanks to Joseph. He utilized my new Guitar Day program, so we could check out his new axe on the show before he got it. Let's go ahead and see what this one's all about. Because I've never heard of this model before he sent it to me, but I was actually, you know, very impressed with the way this thing looked and all the specs that they were able to cram into this. First impressions, that is a really exaggerated carved top on this. And they made it out of something called zebra wood. I first ran into this wood type on a Gibson Guitar of the Week series, Classic Antiques. Every single one is going to be different, but we had chose this one together on Sweetwater's website because we liked the way that the wood grain matched each other and the coloring was just very nice on this. As I was telling you guys earlier, this is a semi-hollow guitar. You've got your whole cat eye thing going on over here. We've got zebra bobbin pickups to match with the zebra wood top, but this has one of those piezo bridges on it, so that means you're going to be able to get an amplified acoustic tone as well as your magnetic pickups, and I think you can also blend it. On top of that, we get a really nice ebony fretboard with jumbo frets, ultra access heel swoop back here. That's looking nice. Our color's pretty cool too. And oh, nice matching headstock veneer as well. On top of that, all of this is a satin finish, but this is known as the faded vintage sunburst. There is one other color called satin vintage Pelham blue and you get the covered pickups. It looks a little bit less exotic. If you're wanting something slightly more traditional, everything else is the same. But this is not one of those cheap Schecters. This is $1,499. However, they do offer another one within this lineup that I think a lot of people would probably actually prefer. It's called Cat's Eye. It essentially looks very similar, except for you get a cool flame top, and it's $350 cheaper at $10,049. Joseph actually wanted that model, but he didn't like it because the reason why that one's cheaper is they downgraded the electronics a little bit. This one gets the Schecter USA pickups, where it doesn't appear that the cat's eye does. So, so far, the only thing I can really knock this is at the $1,500 price point, we do not have a case, we don't have a gig bag, just ships in one of these tiny little boxes. However, this is one of those times where I don't necessarily feel ripped off by that because this thing is just so highly specced. But to learn a little bit more about it, let's go ahead and throw it on the workbench to take a closer look at its parts and specs. Inside our zebra friend here, let's take a look at these pickups that they call the Pasadena set. Apparently they're Schecter USA pickups, so that's why this model sells for a premium. And our bridge pickup is also the same one. Within the circuit, doesn't look like we're going to be able to get in circuit readings because everything just literally reads the same, so we must have like too many electronics in here. However, if I understand the spec sheets correctly, this will be the electric guitar set. It's a master volume, master tone. And then over here you have the piezo pickup set, master volume, master tone. This little friend right here selects between having both of the pickups on, meaning the piezo and electrics, and then this will just be one or the other when you're on the other extremes. And this one selects your regular pickups just like normal. However, stock from the factory, it does go diagonally instead of side to side. And it is a very stiff switch. Another cool fancy feature here is for these pickups, you actually have a coil split option. I thought for sure it was going to be coil split neck, coil split bridge, but no, it's just a single push pull pot right here. And they have recessed the top a little bit around our knobs, kind of PRS in style. In fact, in many ways, I think that's what this guitar is going after. The McCarty 594 Hollow Body 2 that we had reviewed and documented in this episode. Although at a vastly different price range. As far as our pickup cavities, got your shielding paint. Nothing too overly spectacular. Honestly, their drill run there looks pretty sloppy. I don't see the wood grain underneath that, but I don't have a lot of experience with zebra wood. So it's possible that's a veneer over a different zebra wood top to get the more fancier looking one, but they all do appear to be different. So I could very well be wrong on that. Now let's talk about our bridge. So if you don't know what a piezo is, it's this. So you basically have these built-in sensors on your saddles that the pickups are on. This is the Fishman Power Bridge. It's made in Germany, as you can see by our markings there. Then you got your PCB on the bottom of it. 
and the wire from your bridge just goes through the body here into our electronics cavity. So if you're ever modifying a guitar and you happen to see a little hole under your bridge, it's because someone at one point in time had a piezo system with it. But our tailpiece is a little bit unique. It utilizes a Tone Pros tailpiece, which means it's a locking system. We can see our branding right there, and it locks to the posts using these set screws. That helps with string changes because you don't have to worry about this thing falling off. But usually, when you have a locking tailpiece, you also have a locking bridge, but since this one is a Fishman product, that, that's probably why it's not. Here's another thing I noticed. In order to get that off, I was like, oh, I saw there were some Allen wrenches in our box. Well, some information about our nuts. So I went to grab these and uh, none of them worked. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like they thought that one was going to work, but it's too big. So that's something Schechter should probably know about, because this is your truss rod adjustment tool then. So I had to use my Gibson multi-tool to get that one off. However, to be completely fair, outside of replacing it or being on my show, there's no reason to ever take your tailpiece off. As far as being fancy, we have five ply binding around the whole body. And overall, this kind of satin finish feels like it might not buff up as much as other ones just from regular play wear. Although with enough rubbing, I'm sure it will. But it gives it a nice faded look, and that's what they were going for. This does have quite a nice belly to it. It really ramps up quickly. However, looking at it closer, this more so looks like a chambered mahogany body to me rather than like a true semi-hollow construction where they have like a pressed back and sides but let's break out the endoscope and see how it was made. So first off, our F-hole kind of looks like a little moon right there. Just has his nose or a cat eye, but inside it. All right, I'm impressed. The chamber actually does go all the way up into the horn. I was thinking for sure that it would just kind of be like a little area right here, but no, it goes all the way up. But now going towards our strap button, which is sunk right here in that little block, we actually do have a cut in our center block area right here. So we can continue through but we basically just get cut off. There is no connected chamber, so we cannot view our electronics from inside here. So to recap, that's a chamber from here, and then you do have a center block opening right here, but then that cavity ends right here, so we'll have to take a look at that on the back. Moving on from our mahogany body and zebra wood top, we've got the mahogany neck with an ebony fretboard, and it's 24 jumbo frets on this one. The ebony board has lots of wood grain. It honestly looks like it was something that was dyed. As I was cleaning the fretboard off, some of the dye was still there. But it still looks pretty good and is the part. There are some areas where the wood grain's like very big. But I do want to compliment them on whatever perloid material they use. It looks great. Especially our first fret inlay. It has a nice bubbling like feature depending on your angle. It almost looks like the real deal. I was surprised. I had to look at the spec sheet just to be sure. It's kind of an interesting design. I couldn't really tell what they were doing here, but now that I've got it in person, it's two L-shaped brackets and then they have a centerpiece. So it's like a regular block inlay that just has some other things going on for the first 12 frets. But after that, they ditch the center block and just leave it with your L-shaped ones. We have a 25 and a half inch scale length with a 14 inch fretboard radius paired with our black tusk nut at 1.66 inches, increasing to 2.07 by the 12th. And a first fret neck up the 0.83, staying fairly thin by the 12th at 0.9. Here's a look at that neck, first fret and 12th fret. It's a C-shaped neck profile. It's actually very comfy, especially in your heel cutaway area. We've got the continuation of our five ply binding along our headstock, and you do have kind of a PRS-like headstock. So it appears they're trying to go for as straight string pull as possible. And again, that cool zebra wood veneer. This is also done up in a satin finish. And our truss rod is in here. And our truss rod cover tells you the model, C1EA. Although if you look up Schecter C1, there's tons of different models here. A lot of them have some sort of a trem system, but I think that's why I was really open to this one. It had a whole bunch of stuff going on. It's got the cool zebra wood top. It doesn't have any trem system, so I'm at home. And we've got cool inlays. It's super axis healed. So far, I'm still happy with this. Can't wait to hear how it sounds, but let's check out the back real quick. Now we move on to the back. So this is an active pickup system, so you do need to utilize a 9-volt battery. But I really like this battery pack. I always hate the connections of these on guitars because they feel so flimsy, and over time that connector can break. So that's nice to see, we just got prongs. And it even labels it in a way that nobody can get confused, plus and minus. The only downside being it's really hard to get it out, I just found using a screwdriver works pretty good. And then here's what we're working with. I thought for sure it's just going to be a big cluster of wires. It is, but you've got a lot of room over here you could have done even more with. Nice ample room so that our screws don't chip out. This is our piezo control, as well as our regular pot and our one push-pull pot. 
Since they're different style pots, there is a very slight different feel in that one. They appear to be Korean branded pots for our regular ones. However, there is only one output jack, so you might have to get like a Y splitter cable. If you want to send acoustic sounds to one amp and your electrics to the other. I'm not really too familiar with how all that works. So for today's demo, it's all going to be within an electric amp, which isn't necessarily the best way to experience a piezo pickup. Now, if you look at this cavity, it is completely of itself. It doesn't actually continue upwards. So that means there may or may not be an additional chamber right here. So in my opinion, is it a true semi-hollow? Nah, that's just a chambered mahogany body. Now the rest of the back, let's count the pieces. There's one, two, and then it looks like just one big third one. So at least three pieces here for our mahogany body. And then we got some bad news. I'll have to let my new guitar dayer know that there is a ding right here. My advice to him would probably be just to leave it because this is a beautiful example, but we could always wait for a different one to show up. And finish wise, you can see some like micro imperfections in here that look like finished dips. Honestly, that's probably just a light contamination in the finish. It's not overly noticeable, but there is one like right here as well. I just like this axis heel carve that they've got going on here. Swoops away the heel, swoops away a little bit of the body. That way your hand can just completely hug. And this is a full two octave scale. I would say the 24th is still a little bit of a stretch. They almost needed a little bit more of a cutout right there. You can get it if you need to. That transitions beautifully right here into our mahogany neck. Nice straight wood grain, nice burst pattern. Then we do have a volute on the back. Our serial number is right there on our decal. Looks like this one was from 2022. And these guys are crafted in Indonesia. In stock from the factory, we do have locking Schecter tuners. However, they don't actually string it up as a locking tuner stock from the factory. It's funny, I see that all the time. I think it comes down to reliability, because sometimes cheaper strings will snap when you try to lock them and do your stretching. And when a factory's turning out, you know, thousands of guitars, I'm sure that adds up. All said and done, not a terrible weight. Six pounds, 13.7 ounces. Let's go ahead, plug it in, and hear how the zebra moon sounds. <laughs> So far, I really like this bridge pickup. It's very mid-rangey is a good way to put it. just gets a little bit too aggressive. I think I might lower it. That's a little bit better than our combination. Then we've got the option to split all that. does clean up kind of the muddiness of it.
Yeah, rolling your tone down to about a seven helps it not be quite as bright when it's split. <laughs> Let's try our piezo system. about you guys, but I think I actually prefer the piezo in this guitar over the humbuckers. And remember, it would sound better if it was going through an electric acoustic amp rather than just my Marshall Blues Breaker, but I think it sounds pretty good in the room, but full on can be kind of bright sounding. So if you just turn it down to about a seven or an eight, it tames it. So far, that's one bad thing I don't like about this guitar is the tone knobs don't have much of a dynamic range to them. Full on 10. <laughs> because once you're by like four, it's just like... Not what I normally associate with a piezo sound. Now our final option is having both of the pickup sets on, magnetic and the piezo. certainly different. Again, it would sound better if you had it going to two different amps. So you can go from this. To this. Or even this. All said and done, what are my final thoughts on this Schecter? I was pleasantly surprised with what they were able to offer on this very unique package. Like, it's familiar, kind of Stratocaster-like. If you do a lot of soloing, you're gonna love this little swoop in your heel. And yet, you can get acoustic guitar tones out of this. So this would be a great coffee house like gig instrument because you can have the sounds of an acoustic guitar, but with the playability of an electric and be able to go back and forth between them if you need to. Now, after trying this, I wasn't the biggest fan of the Schecter pickups. And I looked at the spec sheet of 
the cat eye one and it still comes with the same piezo. So honestly, I would suggest going for the cheaper one and then put whatever boutique pickups that you would rather have in the guitar. That seems like the way to go if you like the look of a flame maple top and don't necessarily want the zebra wood. But let's face it, the zebra wood top is pretty cool when you get a nice one with great wood grain like this. Pretty much my only gripe is I think the action's a little bit high on this one, so I might need to lower that. But other than that, the only thing I could really complain about is I feel the controls are a little bit crammed. They're just all so close together. And we saw that there's additional room in there. Maybe they could try to space out the controls a bit, but that's just a personal preference thing. All right, troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed checking out this new Guitar Day purchase with me today, and you can use your new knowledge one day. All right, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you tomorrow on the next one. Take care. If you enjoyed tonight's episode, consider subscribing. I post videos like this every day. And you might even enjoy this next one.